What is the Red Smoke? Chapter 3 of Poppy Playtime introduced a new game mechanic that involves wearing a gas mask to protect the player from red gas. It spread all throughout play care and seems to be completely unregulated now that the factory is abandoned. There's a lot of gas contamination, so much to the point where there's even pools of this substance in the back rooms of play care. Although the smoke is produced in the gas production zone, it seems to have leaked almost everywhere. The red smoke also has effects on the player throughout the game. The first time we encounter it, we enter a dreamlike hallucination, seeing and hearing things that aren't actually there. The second time we encounter the smoke, it completely knocks us out, unless we wear the gas mask for protection. Why is it that the red smoke has different functions though? It could be that the smoke is just more potent in certain areas of the factory, which causes us to die on the spot, versus the less potent smoke that makes us hallucinate. And this checks out, as we know how the red smoke was used to affect the children. The first VHS tape of the game opens up to a woman named Claire Harper, who explains to an employee what happened to a child by the name of Mary Payne, who is theorized to later become Mommy Longlegs. All right, Miss Harper, please explain the situation. Spare no detail. Well, like any night, all the children were getting asleep. It was peaceful, quiet. Catnap had the red smoke in the room. Then suddenly, there was this scream. <sighs> Nightmares happen, I know, but this, I mean, dilated pupils and quivering lips. The way her eyes darted around the room, and I swear, her hand in mine, it felt like her blood was boiling beneath her skin. <sighs> she saw something, too. Something horrible. She... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Miss Harper, we'll provide the very best care we can offer. You have my word. But this is important. Did Marie happen to describe what she saw? Yes. A monster, she said, said that it was colorless. Gosh, I could feel the poor little heart pounding. For her, it was right there. And her movements, they were so wild. Arms flailing, legs kicking. It's clear that the red smoke causes very strong side effects and we can conclude that it induces hypnagogia. This simply refers to the transitional period between being awake and going asleep. During hypnagogia, it's not uncommon to go through different types of hallucinations, almost like having a nightmare but being partially awake. For example, sleep paralysis usually happens during this stage, so when the player loses the game by inhaling the red smoke, we are most likely to enter a sleepy, dreamlike state. This makes sense because the hallucinations we go through in Home Sweet Home and the counselor's office end once we wake up from our slumber. And when it comes to the colorless creature that Marie saw, she was referring to the nightmare catnap that we see right before our big boss battle. But unfortunately, the effects of the red smoke weren't just limited to the player and the orphans. In the catnap recall VHS tape, we learned that Playtime Co. was selling plushies of the smiling critters to the general public, and catnap's plush released a gas when its tail was pulled. Although this gas is clear and not red, we can assume that it had the same properties as the red smoke. However, parents across the country report their children experiencing strange and often violent nightmares, and beside them, their little grinning catnap doll. And because of the backlash, Playtime Co. ended up pulling catnap from the toy line. Now, why would Playtime sell toys that produce hallucinogens to the public? No clue, but what we do know is that this gas was used to make children drowsy so that it would be easier to perform experiments on them. It just happened to come with some unwanted side effects. So we know why the smoke was used, but what exactly is it and what is it made out of? Well, at this point, we're used to all of 
of the poppy flower imagery around the factory, but this is because it serves a very important purpose. There's a specific breed of poppy flowers called breed seed poppy, or its common name, opium poppy. Opium is an insanely addictive drug that makes you go to sleep, and opium poppies release a ton of this stuff. In chapter two, placed on Elliot Ludwig's desk, we find a document titled Experiment 814. It explains an experiment done in which dead rats were submerged into a poppy flower and preservative gel mixture. This demonstration was performed to explore the reviving qualities of the poppy flower, but it didn't work. The last paragraph states that something larger would yield greater results. This note was likely written before any orphan experiments were being performed. We can also conclude that Elliot Ludwig wrote this note and performed the experiment himself, since it was in his office. Speaking of objects in his office, we also find a VHS tape that appears to be a documentary about Ludwig himself, and it reveals some important information about him. Playtime Co is the product of a great man by the name of Elliot Ludwig, divorced but a family man at heart. His sights were always set on bringing amazing toys to amazing children around the globe. Ludwig spent countless hours in the factory, working overtime relentlessly in an attempt to continuously innovate and surprise. In the 1960s, an unfortunate family death had pushed Ludwig down to his lowest. But with so much ambition, he rose back up and continued to fulfill his vision for the Playtime Co. toy factory. Ludwig could never be content leaving a project unfinished. But just how did one man come to create such an astounding empire? How did he manage to stay determined even after suffering such a tragic loss? This unfortunate familial death impacted Ludwig in a way that the documentary just glosses over. Maybe he became so obsessed with immortality, hoping that he could bring his loved one back to life. This is why he performed the experiment in the first place. The notes hinting at using larger subjects could refer to using children to test the poppy substance on. It's also possible that Playtime Co. decided to switch to gas over gel because it would be easier to distribute gas to a large amount of children in a short amount of time, easily getting into their lungs. And while opium is known to be a depressant, meaning that it slows you down, it's not exactly known to cause hallucinations. Although this could just mean that Playtime also mixed in other chemicals that would cause different effects. It's also important to point out that back then, drug regulations weren't as strict, so the company was able to get away with a lot, especially since Playtime is a toy factory and not a pharmacy. Also, the red smoke seems to be highly concentrated in Playcare compared to other parts of the factory, mainly because that's where the gas production zone is located, so it would have been easier to hide it if need be. And right before you enter the gas production zone, there's a poster of mommy long legs that reminds employees to wear their masks before entering. It's crazy to think that children lived in conditions like this. Even considering the color of the gas masks, yellow and red, primary colors designed that way to make kids feel at ease and not to be scared by them. After all, they probably saw employees wearing these masks on a daily basis. It makes you wonder exactly how evil the people behind these masks actually were. In fact, in chapter 3, we're able to find out the name of the man who runs it all, Nate Carpenter. His office is in the counselor's building, but we don't really find any more information about him. However, he is important enough that Bob Entertainment decided to name drop. But what about the toys? It's a bit hard to distinguish if they're also affected by the smoke. Catnap produces it, so it obviously doesn't affect them at all. And according to Poppy's commercial in chapter one, her hair smells like Poppy's, so maybe she's immune to a certain extent. As for the rest of the toys, we just don't know because we aren't shown how they react to the red smoke. But there is this one scene in the counselor's office 
where you can see Bunzo Bunny walking across a room and coughing, slowing down, and eventually collapsing. This is when Catnap takes the opportunity to run by and take Bunzo Bunny, disappearing into the depths of the office. But after all this chaos, it makes you wonder if this was Elliot Ludwig's original plan. If he first started experimenting with poppies just so that he could bring a family member back from the dead, does this mean that he wanted to do experiments on helpless orphans? As time went on, the burden that he had to carry due to his grief could have caused him to descend further and further into insanity. We even learn a really incriminating piece of information about him in Home Sweet Home, as it was revealed that the body of a child was found in his residence. So it's possible that Elliot Ludwig had a hand in this. He would have turned to real life humans to continue his research with poppies. It would begin as a way to sedate his subjects, but then it would also become a key part of keeping remnants of the children alive after they were turned into toys. But what do you think about the red smoke? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and click on this video right here.